Miss Mary Emma, we are now in your hand. Good evening to President Good Bell, evening. to Mayor Pro Tem Holly, to our guest speaker, Reverend Terry, to all that's listening to us live on Facebook. <clears throat> it gives me a great pleasure and honor to introduce the MC of the hour. He is none other than Mr. Demarcus Joyner who is currently a senior majoring in civil engineering with a concentration of pre-law, and he's from Roanoke, Alabama. He currently serves as the 109th Student to Government Association President of the University of Alabama. With a passion for advocacy and service, DeMarcus has previously served as the SGA Senator for the College of Engineering and the Vice President of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion. During his tenure as the first elected Vice President of DEI, DeMarcus held the inception of multiple campus initiatives such as Miss Unique UA Pageant, the DEI Certificate Program, the International Karaoke, just to name a few. He has made it his mission to not only to prove himself as an outstanding leader through SGA, but numerous other campus activities and involvements like Collegiate 100, Black Men of America, Afro-American Gospel Choir, the National Society of Black Engineers, LSAMP, Mentor UP, and Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, where he has served on the regional board as the Alabama Assistant District Director and National Board, Sub board Southern Regional Assistant Vice President. DeMarcus proudly advocates for diverse student experiences and inclusion. He uses his platform to educate students about the campus resources available to, them, available to them while serving as an instrument for change for the voice of those who are silenced. Grounded in his faith, John accredited his impactful journey, journey <clears throat> and achievements to God first, then his parents, Robert Alton and Regina Joyner, his pastor, Reverend L.B. Houston, and other mentors. With hopes of practicing law, DeMarcus believes that he can, and I'm telling you he will, be a catalyst, a, a catalyst for change on campus, in the community, and around the nation. Without any further ado, may I introduce to you our MC for the program tonight, Mr. DeMarcus Joyner. Amen. Thank you. I may need to bring you up here to Tuscaloosa to introduce <laughs> me more often. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you all today for attending our first Rosa Parks Day in Randolph County by the a Community Committee on the Move. Um, and without further ado, I think it would be best if we had a selection from Ms. Malia Brown to kick this program off. Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows go? Why should my heart feel lonely and long? For heaven and home. When Jesus is my portion, a constant friend is he. His And I know he watches over me. Oh, his eye is on the sparrow. And I know he watches me. 
I sing because I'm happy. And I sing because I'm free. Oh, his eye is on the sparrow. And I know you are just me. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Miss Malia. That was amazing. Amen. Amen. An invocation by Mr. Mac Bell, followed by a welcome from Mayor Pro Tem Tammy Holly. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, it's once more and again that we come before that presence. We come, our Father, calling on your name. Your name is above all other names. Yes, Lord. We pause this afternoon to say thank you. We thank you, our Heavenly Father for the sacrifices that our leaders in the past have given. And we thank you, our Father, for the late Sister Rosa Park that stood up for right and stood against wrong. Bless this service tonight Heavenly Father, that's the best speaker that's going to speak to us and speak to the world tonight on this day, our first annual Rosa Park Day in Randolph County. Mm -hmm. Lord, be with him. Mm -hmm. Guide his mind. Direct his thought that we, the world, will be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. To the ADCOM president, Mr. Mac Bell. To the master of order, Mr. Demarcus Joyner. To the guest speaker, Reverend William Terry. And to everyone who is tuned in to Zoom or Facebook Live watching this program, we want to welcome you. And we're glad to be bringing it to you all the way from Roanoke, Alabama located in East Central Alabama in Randolph County. This is our first annual virtual, virtual Rosa Parks Day. This seems to be the way for now. Although this pandemic has the negatives, there is a positive that can come out of it. Wherever you may be, we want you to kick back, relax in your comfort zone and enjoy this virtual program. Again, you are welcome, welcome. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Mac and Miss Tammy. If I kick back, I might fall asleep. It's been a long day, so. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we'll have um, another selection by Miss Kenyatta Ammons, followed by the introduction of the speaker by Miss Tamara Terry. We shall overcome, we shall overcome, we shall overcome someday. Die. overcome someday. The Lord will see us through. The Lord will see us through. The Lord will see us through someday. Die Down in my heart, I 
do believe that we are not afraid today. We shall overcome. We shall overcome. We shall overcome someday. Down in my heart, I do believe we shall overcome someday. 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 Amen. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I would, I would like to introduce to some present to others my father, the Reverend William R. Terry. From early childhood, he worked under his father, Deacon Jesse A. Terry at Terry Upholstery. In 1963, my grandfather, Jesse Terry, along with his wife, Velma, founded Terry Manufacturing Company in which he worked while he was still in high school. Terry Manufacturing Company grew to become the largest Black-owned apparel manufacturing company in the United States. In 1967, he graduated as valedictorian of his class from Randolph County Training School. In 1971, he graduated from Morehouse College with a BA in Business Administration. After graduating from Morehouse, he returned to Roanoke and became vice president of Terry Manufacturing Company, Terry Construction, Terry Properties, and Hillcrest Corporation. In 1974, he graduated from the Weaver School of Real Estate and became a licensed real estate broker in the state of Alabama. In 1980, along with his father, he, he excuse me, he designed a pew insert system to convert wood pews to upholstered pews as his father's company Terry Manufacturing, I'm sorry, Terry Upholstery. In 1982, he designed a pneumatic press which reduced the time of covering an insert from 60 minutes to six minutes. This reduction in labor costs stimulated the vision for going national, knowing that no one could compete with his insert system and pricing. In 1983, he executed his vision of going nationwide with his insert system under the name Terry Church Furnishings, which was expanded into a full line of church furnishings. In May of 1983, he accepted his call to the ministry at the Rock Mills Missionary Baptist Church. In January of 1984, he accepted the call to pastor Canaan Missionary Baptist Church in Welch, Alabama. January, 1991, Reverend Terry traveled to Nigeria, West Africa, where, whereby crusades were conducted in multiple villages. He often states that the highest platform he has ever preached from was a kitchen table in a small village in Africa. In 1994, he founded Abundant Life Christian Church in his home. <coughs> and they were blessed in September of 1995 to a new facility located at 2500 Highway 431 on prime real estate that was donated by Mrs. Evelyn Smetley Smith. The church remains there today and he continues to pastor there. From 1990 to 1995, he was appointed to the city by the city council to the Ronald City Board of Ed Education. Reverend Terry is father of five children, Tamara, Latanya, Christopher, Martegas, and Javaris. He is a grandfather to 13 and a great grandfather to five. I am so proud to be able tonight to be able to introduce to you all, to present to some, but most of all, to, to show y'all my dad, my father, and the world, Reverend William Ray Terry. 
Dad, come on in the room. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for those kind words of introduction to uh, Sister Ammons, who introduced the MC to all that bring that was bringing us the uh, ministry through song to uh, the MC of the hour to Mayor Pro Tim, Tammy Holly, and to Councilman Emeritus, <laughs> Mike Arthur Bell. All right now. That's all right. Uh, I, I pray that you all will join with me in bestowing this title of Councilman Emeritus Bell because 32 years of service. Amen. We don't want to ever forget. So we want to honor him all the days of his life mm -hmm. and thank God for his leadership. Mm -hmm. My prayer always is that God will give me the tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakeneth morning by morning. He wakeneth my ears to hear as the learn. Rosa Parks and the empowerment of a virtuous woman. Mm. Rosa Parks, and the empowerment of a virtuous woman. Whenever we hear the words virtuous woman, our minds automatically go to Proverbs the 31st chapter. In verse number one, it says the words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. That's various schools of thoughts as to the identity of King Lemuel. But I'm of the school of thought that it was King Solomon himself. Mm the prophecy or the inspired utterances that was taught to him by his mother, Bathsheba. So this means that this is Bathsheba speaking as recorded by Solomon. She asked the question in verse 10, who can find a virtuous woman for her price as far above rubies? Now, he was a man with 700 wives and 300 concubines. <laughs> Yet Bathsheba said, you're going to have trouble finding a virtuous woman. He was a man, the richest man on the face of the earth. Yet Bathsheba says, you do not have enough rubies to buy a virtuous woman. All right. Because a virtuous woman is never for sale. Amen. Now, Bible Study 101 tells us that we are never to use Webster's Dictionary to understand biblical terms. Mm. You see, words change their meaning over time, and they take on different meaning in different cultures. Okay. Webster's would tell you that virtue is behavior that shows you high moral standards mm. that's including but not limited to being a virgin. All right. So by this standard, most women in the Bible and most women today could never become a virtuous woman. Mm. Bathsheba herself would have been disqualified she had had an affair with David. Tamar 
the mother, the matriarch of the whole of the tribe of Judah. Yes. By Webster's dictionary definition could never have become a virtuous woman okay. because she played the role of a harlot and seduced her father-in-law, Judah, yes, sir. producing a child by the name of Phares, okay. which is biblical proof that the baby is not the sin. Hmm. You see, Tamar was a Canaanite woman, meaning that she was a direct descendant of Ham through his son, Canaan. Yes. So we know that Ham is that blood that populated Africa. Mm -hmm. And there are those who say that all the descendants of Ham was cursed, but the Bible did not say that. Mm -hmm. The Bible says Canaan was cursed. And that curse was fulfilled when the Israelites dispossessed the Canaanites of their homeland. Mm. Here was this Canaanite woman, the blood of Ham in her veins, mm. African blood in her veins. 38 generations from Tamar came Christ the Messiah with that same blood. By Webster's dictionary standard, Rahab could never have become a virtuous woman. See, Rahab was a harlot, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. another Canaanite woman with the blood of Ham or Africa in her veins. Yes. She married Salmon who was of the tribe of Judah. Parenthetically, everybody in the tribe of Judah had the blood of Ham in their veins. Rahab became the great, great, great grandmother of David. And 28 generations from David, we are right back to Jesus, our Christ, our Savior. By Webster's definition, the Samaritan woman at the well could never have become a virtuous woman. Mm. She had five husbands and number six was not her own. <laughs> but yet Jesus told her that I can instill in you wells of living water yes, springing up unto everlasting life. Yes. We know the story of the woman that had the issue of blood. Mm -hmm. The Bible says she touched the hem of Jesus' garment and virtue went out of him. Well, morality nor virginity did not run out of Jesus, even though he was in possession of both. Mm -hmm. But what went out of him was power or an empowerment to become. As many as received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God. So by even Webster's definition, mm. Mrs. Potts was a virtuous woman. All right. But that's not what made her a virtuous woman in the eyes of Jesus. She, like everybody else, had to touch the hem of his garment. Amen. Rosa Louise McCauley mm. was born on February the 4th of 1913 in Tuskegee, Alabama. At an early age, she moved to Pine Liver, Alabama, and later on was educated in Montgomery, Alabama. December the 18th of 1932, she married Raymond Parks, of Weedowie, Alabama, right here in Randolph County. And for those who are not, uh, that's listening, that's not from here, that's 12 miles from Roanoke, Alabama. Mm -hmm. Now that explains why Mrs. Parks came to Roanoke in the early 1990s to reconnect with the relatives of her husband, the Marable family. Mm -hmm. And she lodged with Johnny Buster 
Marble, my cousin Keith Marble called me and invited me to a private meeting to meet with Mrs. Parks. And I carried my daughter Tanya along with me. Raymond Parks moved to Montgomery, Alabama. He was a barber and he was an activist before he met Mrs. Parks. For he organized on behalf of the Scottsboro, Alabama boys. That was nine black boys uh, between uh, nine and 12 years old who had been wrongly convicted of raping a white girl and sentenced to death. Yeah. Raymond Parks told his wife that he would not rest until these boys were set free. You see, a virtuous woman's husband is known in the gate, according to Bathsheba, when he sitteth among the elders of the land. Mrs. Parks became secretary to E.D. Nixon, the president of the NAACP of Montgomery. Mm -hmm. This made her aware of the 1954 Brown versus Board of Education ruling that overturned the 1896 Plessy Ferguson ruling that gave us separate but equal. Yeah. But the Supreme Court said in Brown versus Board of Education that separate but equal has no place under the Constitution. Yeah. Right. This led the NAACP to look for a test case that they could overthrow the laws that brought segregation to the buses in Montgomery. On March the 2nd of 1955, a 15-year-old girl by the name of Claudette Colvin sat down on the bus and refused to move. For this, she was arrested. Mm -hmm. The NAACP thought that they had a test case, but the 15-year-old girl got pregnant in the meantime, and they considered that disqualifying. Mm -hmm. But Mrs. Parks, being a virtuous woman, mm -hmm. mentored the 15-year-old girl and let her know that I know a man that will wash you and make you as white as snow. Mm -hmm. As I said about Farish, the baby is not the sin, it's the act. It is amazing, it's amazing how many people who are involved in the same act that will produce a baby outside of marriage, mm -hmm. but yet will condemn a 15 year old girl because she had the evidence by getting pregnant. Mm -hmm. The other side of that coin is there are those male or female that did maintain their virginity until they got married. But they take the Webster's Dictionary definition of virtue and lift themselves up in pride and become so pious until all they have for the little girl that got pregnant is condemnation. Mm -hmm. But Bathsheba says you can tell a virtuous woman because she stretcheth out her hands to the poor uh -huh. and she reacheth forth her hands yeah. to the needy. Yeah. Now, Mrs. Parks always said that the lynching of Emmett Till was on her mind when she sat down on the bus and refused to move. All right. Now, if you have young kids in the room, you might want to ask them to leave until I finish telling this story. Emmett Till traveled from Chicago down to Money, Mississippi to spend the summer with his grandparents. On August the 28th of 1955, he along with some of his cousins went to a store that was operated by Carolyn Bryant. It is alleged that he whistled at her. She told her husband and he told his half brother. They went to the 
house, they kidnapped the 14-year-old boy. They carried him to a barn. They beat him beyond recognition. They shot him in the head. They plucked out one of his eyes. They took barbed wire and tied a cotton gin fan around his neck and dropped him in the river as though he was only fit to be food for the fish. His body floated to the surface and the only way they could identify him was with a ring that his mother had given him. The Bryant's was put on trial. After one hour of deliberations, they came back and acquitted him. And they said, what took us so long is we sent out for Coca-Cola. Look Magazine paid them $4,000 and they confessed in gruesome details about the murder, knowing that they could not be tried twice for the same crime. With this on Mrs. Parks, mine, she boarded a bus December the 1st of 1955 driven by James Blake and sat down. When the white section became full and blacks were to move to the back of the bus, Mrs. Parks remained seated. Two other blacks got up and moved. The bus driver says, are you gonna stand up? She says, no. Mm. Mrs. Parks later says the people tell the story that her feet was tired. But it's obvious that it was her soul that was tired. Yes, sir. For she says that I had been pushed as far as I could stand to be pushed. Blake says, I'm going to have to have you arrested. Mrs. Parks calmly replied, you may do that. She was not loud. She was not boisterous. Mm. She was not arrogant. She was not rude. You see, a virtuous woman knows the power of meekness. Yes, sir. Meekness is not weakness. All right. It's power under the control of the spirit of the living God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Remember, meekness turned over tables in the temple. Yes. But those with no virtue, male or female, no wisdom, are imbecilic enough to equate meekness with being an Uncle Tom. Mm -hmm. It takes far more courage to remain calm in a crisis. Yes, sir than it does to fly off the handle. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. We fail to realize the power <clears throat> of the word. Choose your words carefully. Mm -hmm. That's it. For the word is quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit. But instead, we want to be involved in a verbal knife fight. That is not virtue on display. But the thing is, most folks have to get angry to get up the courage to say anything. Uh -huh. I've always said the pot with the least amount of water in it is going to boil the quickest. Uh -huh. My daddy told me, as a young man, he said, you don't have to have wind in your jaws to disagree. <laughs> Learn how to argue principles and not personalities. That's it. You can always tell a virtuous woman. But Shiva says, because she opened her mouth with wisdom and in her tongue is the law of kindness. A mass meeting was called at Hope Street Baptist Church and 15,000 people showed up. Pastors went to that pulpit. 
with understanding of the time to know what Israel needed to do, it was time to boycott. Now, there were those who says that this movement was spontaneous. And in one sense, it was, but in another sense, it was not. You see, Mrs. Parks had spent 42 years to become a virtuous woman. Yes, sir. You see, when you reach that level of maturity, according to Paul, that means you're filled with knowledge of his will, mm. wisdom, and spiritual understanding. Yes. Yet Paul himself says, I'm not yet apprehended. Mm. He said, I press to mark towards the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now the born again experience is instant. Yes. But to become a virtuous woman is a lifetime of pursuit. Yes. Mm -hmm. I know there are those today who say they can get it instantly. They just claim it or jump up and down two or three times and they have it. That's not in the Bible. <laughs> It's a lifetime journey, oh. and you never really get there. That's right. The Women's Political Council have been organizing since 1946. This was a group of women that uh, came out of Alabama State University who had laid the groundwork for this boycott before this December day mm -hmm. without women the boycott would not have been a success. Yes, the Montgomery Improvement Association was formulated. At one time, they were spending $3,000 a week and organizing 15 to 20,000 rides per day. The White Citizens Council also sprung into action. <laughs> which was nothing more than Klansmen in business suits. Yes, <laughs> Dr. King's home was bombed. That's right. Four black churches was bombed because they knew the power of the masses in the pews. A white pastor by the name of Reverend Robert Gretz pastored an all black Trinity Lutheran church went to his pulpit and told his people that it's time to boycott. Mm. A white lawyer by the name of Clifford Durer and his wife, Virginia, also struck hand with the black community. Now, one may ask the question why that these whites strike hands with the black community. Mm -hmm. They had never been called a nigger. Mm -hmm. They'd been called nigger lovers. Mm. They'd never been called monkeys. Mm. They could sit wherever they wanted to on the bus. So why? Evidently, they understood the true meaning of the story of the Good Samaritan. Yes. Mm -hmm. You see, that story was in answer to the question of what must I do to inherit eternal life? Mm. Jesus said, I'll tell you. There was a Samaritan man who came and saw one that had fallen among thieves and he was moved with compassion. Yes. Meaning that he had not fallen among thieves, but you see, Compassion is a bridge All right. that carries you from that which is not your reality to sit in somebody else's reality. Mm -hmm. Now, compassion is an option for a non-believer. For one that's born again, it's a requirement. <laughs> mm. So this Samaritan was able to inherit eternal life. But the Levite and the priest, he said they went by on the other side. They showed no compassion, meaning, according to Jesus, 
they could not inherit eternal life. Mm -hmm. If you want eternal life, you have to come to those of the captivity and sit where they sit. Mm -hmm. The Grace home was bombed. Raymond Parks rushed to the scene, stepped on 11 sticks of dynamite, reached down and snuffed out the flame. In 1955, the Parks moved to Detroit because they had been threatened so much. Now, most of the time, people in the story of Rosa Parks right here and fail to realize the importance of this final chapter. Now, give me a minute to lay out this final chapter and after this, I'll move to my closing. Good time, Terry. You see, Mrs. Parks was bold enough to embrace the Black Power Movement. Mm -hmm. She maintained her life as an activist by embracing people like Stokely Carmichael, mm -hmm. H. Rap Brown. She supported the movement to release and free Nelson Mandela. Mm -hmm. She embraced Malcolm X. Mm -hmm. I know you wear the t-shirt now, but I lived during the 60s. I'm not sure you would have worn it then. <laughs> <laughs> she embraced Shokwe Lumumba. Shokwe Lumumba asked Mrs. Parks one day who her hero was. She answered Malcolm X. He said, I thought you would have said Dr. King. She said, no, I loved and greatly admired Dr. King. But my champion was Malcolm X <laughs> because of his boldness, his clarity of vision, and his affirmation as to what blacks needed to do. I told you meekness is not weakness. <laughs> it's just power under control. Mm. Now, to understand the Black Power Movement, we only have to analyze the meaning of the name Shokwe Lumumba. Shokwe, an African tribe in Angola that was successful in fighting off the slave traders. Lumumba, naming himself after Patrice Lumumba, who was the first democratically elected prime minister of the African nation of Congo. Now a little background to the Congo. That was a time when King Leopold II ruthlessly ruled the Congo for his rubber plantations he implemented forced labor, meaning that people literally dropped dead from exhaustion. If production was not made, a hand or a foot would be cut off. Women would be <laughs> raped. Millions were sold into the slave trade and millions more was found in mass graves. I did say millions. <laughs> The population of the Congo went from 20 million down to 10 million. Mm. So here's a Holocaust to the tune of 10 million souls, yet we know very little about it. Mm. We know of the 6 million Jews and that Holocaust, and we should mm. know, and we should never forget it. But let us not forget our Holocaust of 10 million souls in Congo, not count the rest of Africa. 1884, the Berlin Conference was held. European powers met to divide up 
Africa as though it belonged to them. They implemented a system called colonization, which was nothing more than slavery by another name. Mm -hmm. So Patrice Lumumba rose up to overthrow the colonial powers. He embraced the Pan-African movement, which meant that the riches of Africa should be used to enrich Africans and not Europeans. For this, he was brutally assassinated in 1961. By the way, today, without the raw materials from Africa, the world could not function. Mm. That's right. It gave rise to a doctrine called Lumumbaism when he was assassinated. And under that umbrella is black power, the Black Nationalist Movement and the Pan-African Movement. Mm. That was embraced in the 60s by when we would greet one another, brother or sister, we'd raise our fist and say, Black Power. We wore Afros. We adopted the African attire called dashikis. Mm Many of those dashikis was manufactured right here in Roanoke, Alabama mm-hmm. at Terry Manufacturing Company. Mm-hmm. All right. Founded by my father, Jesse Terry, and my mother, Velma Terry. So why would Terry Manufacturing Company embrace the Black Power Movement? My father, in answering the question as why Terry Manufacturing Company was formed, He said, we wanted to show that black people can promote themselves, that they can be access to the town, to the country and to the economy. We wanted to do something to improve our condition rather than run away from those conditions. Now you find those words in the October 21st, 1969 edition of the Congressional Record of the United States Senate. Mm-hmm. If my father had answered, the, had, had answered and added the words black power to the end of it, it never would have been on the Senate floor. Mm-hmm. It would have tainted the whole thing. Yet this is the embodiment yes, sir. of black power. You see, to say you're pro-black does not mean you're anti-white. That's right. All right. To say you're pro-black lives matter does not mean you're anti-white lives matter. Mm -hmm. That's right. Give you an example. You live in one neighborhood and the neighborhood across from you, fire trucks come, they go to a house that's on fire. Mm. And you go over there and all the other neighbors have gathered around the fire truck, hindering the firefighters, saying, don't my house matter? Hmm. Hmm. How, what will you think about them? And the fireman trying to tell you, well, is this house that's on fire? It's, it's hey, hey. not that your house don't matter. It's the house that's on fire. Our yeah. house is on fire. Yeah. Right. Black lives hey. matter. That's right. April the 4th of 1968, Dr. King was assassinated. Mrs. Parks said she went numb and played Sam Cooke's song, A Change Is Gonna Come, all night long. Dr. King notified, had already notified his secretary that the subject of my next sermon was going to be why America is going to hell. Mm. Mrs. Parks in 1995 was asked how she wanted to be remembered. She said, I just want to be remembered as a person that always wanted to be free and wanted it not only for myself. October the 24th, 2005, Mrs. Parks 
transitioned and lie in repose at the nation's rotunda, becoming the first woman to do so. You see, a virtuous woman yes. understands the words of Bathsheba when she says, favor is deceitful yes. and beauty is vain. Mm -hmm. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Amen. A virtuous woman understands the words that Abigail says to David. When she says, the soul of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of life yes, sir. with the Lord my God. Yes, sir. But the soul of my enemies, them shall he sling out as from the middle of a sling. Yes, sir. A virtuous woman understands why Boaz says to Ruth, may the Lord recompense thy work. Mm -hmm. And a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, yes. under whose wings thou art come to trust. Mm -hmm. A virtuous woman will understand why Mrs. Park's favorite song, Psalms number 27, the Lord is my light and my yes. salvation. Yes, sir. Of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Yes, sir. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, yes, came to eat of my flesh, mm -hmm. they stumbled and fell. Yes, sir. The host should encamp against me. My heart shall not fear. Mm. The war shall rise against me. In this will I be confident. Yes, sir. A virtuous woman will understand why. Mrs. Park's favorite song was, Oh, freedom over me. Yes, sir. Before I be a slave, I'd be buried in my grave and just go home to my Lord. Yes, sir. And be free. A virtuous woman will understand why Harriet Tubman sung, Hell, oh, hell, ye happy spirits. Yes, sir. Death no more shall make you fear. Grief nor sorrow, pain nor anguish shall no more distress you there. Around him are 10,000 angels, yes, sir. always ready to obey command. Mm. They're always hovering over you till you reach the heavenly land. Yes, sir. Jesus, Jesus will go with you. Yes, sir. He will lead you to his throne. Yes, sir. He who died has gone before you. Trod the wine press all alone. Yes, sir. He whose thunder shakes creation, and he who bears the planets rose. Yes. He who rides upon the tempest, and whose scepter sways the whole. Yes. Dark and thorny is the pathway. Yes, sir. Where the pilgrim makes his way. Yes, sir. But beyond this veil of sorrow yes. lie the fields of endless days. Yes, a virtuous woman will know why I always say it is well with my soul. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Whatever my life yes, that taught me to say yes, it sir. is well. Well, it is well with my soul. God bless you. Amen. 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 Mm. I guess I haven't been to church in a, in a while, but as they used to say at Peace and Goodwill, did not our hearts burn? Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, thank you, Reverend Terry, for that amazing word. Um, I know we weren't in church, but I felt like I was at church. Amen, church. amen. And thank all of you all for having me here today and let me have the opportunity to emcee this program. And um, Remember, meekness is not weakness. And That's right. With that, Mr. Mack is back in your hands. Thank you, uh, Mr. Matt, Mr. Otto. I want to thank Pastor Terry. Pastor Terry, you have did a wonderful job. We could not find no one no better Amen. than Pastor William Terry right. to bring this message not only to us, 
but to the world. Amen. Amen. This kind of message need to be spread more often. Yes. We need to know the history of our people. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Terry, for outstanding job. Amen. And I want to thank everyone that appeared on program. These two songbirds, I tell you the truth, these two ladies have sung. I mean, they have sung. And I want y'all. I want y'all to know tonight. Don't hide your voices because I will be calling on you. <laughs> I mean, and very soon, because the talent that you all have, it needs to be spread it worldwide. So again, <laughs> thank you all for singing for this special program. This is the first time that we have did the Rosa Park program of Randolph County. Mm -hmm. If it had not been a pandemic, we probably been uh, all together, but because of this virus, and we don't want to make nobody sick, myself and no one else. So this is the best way that we could uh, do this uh, virtual program to celebrate Rosa Park Day. Amen. I thank the members of ACOM, dedicated young ladies and gentlemen, for being a part of this organization. Our job is to serve the community. Amen. It's not about ourselves. It's about to lift up the community. And that is what we are trying to do every day. Uh, and again, I want to say it one time. Thank the members of Abundant Life Christian Church. Amen. Being also a part of this program tonight. Thank you, Mr. Master of Art. You did a wonderful job. Awesome. And I have been keeping up with you. I am very proud of you. Amen. Yes. Amen. He's in University of Alabama. Before I turn it back to the hands of Pastor Terry, I want to ask the Vice President, Sister Mary Alma, she might have some words that she might want to uh, share with us. And then after then, I will turn it into the closing to Pastor Terry. Sister Mary Alma. Good evening again to everyone. Mm -hmm. I must say that I have been, uh, it has been wonderful this afternoon to hear Reverend Terry. Mm -hmm. He did an awesome job. Mm -hmm. And we need to know more. We need to read more mm -hmm. about our history. That's right. We have a rich history. No other people on this earth has a history like we have. That's right. Thank you, DeMarcus. You did an awesome job. I too follow you. I, 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 I love to see young people go out and do well. Yeah. And all of them can. And like I said, I'm going to look around you probably going to be a uh, governor of the state of Alabama one day. Right. You're not the president of these United States. You can do whatever you want to do. You have the ability. There is no doubt in my mind. And Reverend Terry, awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank I you. I cannot tell you how much I enjoyed what you have given us tonight. It'll make me want to go back and read more about Rosa Parks. Believe me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You are, you did an awesome job. Nobody could have done it any better. And God I bless like, you. Also, I like that ACOM. We have a group of people that work. We have unity within our group. That's right. We have a head, uh, Deacon McBell. But all of us are the neck, and he know what I'm talking about. We all work together, and I appreciate and I love this this group that we that we have, and we are for Randolph County, especially Roanoke. Mm -hmm. And if we can do anything to help the community, we will be glad to assist anybody, whatever they, as long as it's helping the community. And thank uh, our Mayor Pro Tem. Amen. Appreciate her so much. Thank you. She will, never, she will never know how much we appreciate her now. Thank <laughs> you. Back in your hands, uh, Brother Vail. 
Thank you, Sister Mary. And before I turn it back to Pastor Terry, I want to give a shout out to one of our uh, key sponsors of this program, the former, the former chief of police, mm -hmm. Mr. Adam Melton, was a sponsor. Amen. Uh, for this program, I want to thank him for being a sponsor tonight of this special program, our first Rosa Park program. And also, I want I don't want to hog up all of the time. I want we might have some of the ACOM members. Some of them might want to say something. If not, I will turn it back into Pastor Terry's hand. Pastor Terry, it's in your hand. Thank you, thank you all for this opportunity. I pray that something has been said that will enlighten us and encourage us and empower us that we might be able to embrace who we are mm -hmm. and become all that God purposed us to be. The benediction. May the great God of peace that brought forth again from the dead our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of his everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, through Christ Jesus, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Good, by y'all stay blessed.